Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone uh, welcome back to my channel uh, I know it's been a while but uh, so I want to share with you guys uh, two very uh, sp uh, special videos that were shared to me by a brother on Facebook uh, his YouTube channel name is one message uh, he's a subscriber of mine uh, and he made two really interesting videos and he wanted me to share those videos on my channel so I'm going to share uh, these two videos and this is the first part of the video. So title of the video is the right of woman in Islam versus Christianity. And you've seen this in my videos as well. Like uh, there's a lot of nonsense in Christianity in regards to uh, the laws of women. So yeah, uh, I'm going to share, I'm going to shut up now <laughs> and share these two videos. Uh, I'll uh, first post the first video uh, today and inshallah I'll post the second one tomorrow. And after that, uh, I'm going to inshallah I will post a video in my own language, Bengali language. <laughs> uh, it's for my, it's a special gift for my uh, uh, Bengali uh, subscribers. Uh, and after that, uh, inshallah, I will make a video on um, Armin Nawabi and his argument, uh, so-called argument, about why he ate the Quran. <laughs> so in case you guys don't know, Armin Nawabi actually ate the Quran, uh, just like David Wood, which is an another thing I wanted to talk about. But uh, yeah, inshallah, we'll discuss that on, uh, and I'll refute him and his arguments in that video inshallah so yeah uh, enjoy the brother's video and definitely go and subscribe to his channel okay go, if you're subscribed to me definitely go and subscribe to him uh check out his channel he's doing great great work uh he's he's very knowledgeable uh, mashallah so yeah uh, support him uh like his video uh, like this video and yeah and sub uh, subscribe to his channel and uh, yeah inshallah i'll see you guys next time Assalamu alaikum guys, this is one message. So I wanted to look in this issue of women's rights in the Quran and the Bible. This is the issue that is commonly raised by Islamophobes and polemics. So they just want to use women to attack Islam and stuff like that. And one thing that we will do today is that we will examine the verses in the Quran and the Bible and we will look that which book gives the woman the right that she deserves. So the first verse that I'm going to mention from the Quran is from chapter 30 verse 21 of the Quran which it says أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And of his science is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them and he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. So there's a hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim. It is kind of relevant to our discussion, to our video, so I brought it up. It starts, it, there's a chain of narration, but I will start from the uh, from the place that it says that an Abi Hurairata. So it, it goes by this. عن أبي هريرة قال جاء رجل إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال من أحق الناس بحسن سهابتي قال أمك قال ثم من قال ثم أمك قال ثم من قال ثم أمك قال ثم من قال ثم أبوك so it says that Abu Huraira reported that a person said, Allah's Messenger, who amongst the people is most deserving of my good treatment, he said, your mother, again your mother, again your mother, then your father. It's in Sahih Muslim, Hadith 2548. What the scholars say about this Hadith is that, you know, the right of the mothers are three times more than the right of the fathers on their children. So, and there's another Hadith that says, that the paradise is under the feet of the mothers and that shows that if you don't respect your mother and treat her badly you will actually not, you're not gonna see the face of the heaven and paradise you will most likely go to hell as a result of disrespecting your mother and you know treating them in a bad way so that proves again my point that see that how mothers and women you know, women are treated in Islam. This is a big proof. 
In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim fastajaba lahum rabbuhum anni la udiyu amada amilim minkum min zakarin aw unsa ba'dukum min ba'd fallazina hajaru wa akhriju min diyarihim wa udhu fi sabili wa qatalu wa qutilu law kaffiranna anhum sayyatihim wa la utkhilannahum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar سوابا من عند الله والله عنده حسن السواب. And in the translation of the verse, it says, and their Lord responded to them, Never will I allow to be lost the work of any worker among you, whether male or female. You are of one another. So those who emigrated or evacted from their homes, or were harmed in my cause, or fought, or were killed. I will surely remove from them their misdeeds, and I will surely admit them to gardens beneath which rivers flow as reward from Allah, and Allah has with him the best reward. Chapter 3, verse 195. If we look at the verse carefully, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You are of one another, which means that male or female in the sight of Allah are the same or equal. It doesn't matter to him that whether you are a male or a female. But uh, look at the uh, you know the con continuation of the verse. It says that if you are evacuated of your homes, right? If you are harmed or you are fought or you are killed because you believe in Allah, then Allah surely will grant you paradise. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بعض. يعمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم The believers, men and women, are awliya, which means helpers, supporters, friends and protectors. These are the meanings of the word awliya, of one another. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and establish prayer and give zakah and obey Allah and his messenger. Those Allah will have mercy upon them. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. Notice here that the verse says that the believing man and woman are protectors, friends and helpers of each other. So, they enjoin what's right and forbid what's wrong. In other words, a woman can have authority over a man and a man can have authority over a woman. Which is a great point and we will discuss it and it's a beneficial point. We will discuss it later in the video when we go to the Bible. So let's go to another verse. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahunna. Which means they women are clothing for you and you are clothing for them. So uh, the women are your secret keepers or your protectors and you are their secret keepers and their protectors. And in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Chapter 4 verse 4 it says And give the woman upon marriage their bridal gifts graciously But if they give up willingly to, give, to you anything of it Then take it in satisfaction and ease So what exactly this verse mean? So it talks about dowry when um, when you're marrying a woman for example you pay her a exact amount of money so and after the marriage if she gives you you know the dowry willingly you can spend from it but you cannot force your wife to you know give that dowry back that's we will talk about that more in details in upcoming verses in another verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَإِنْ أَرَدْتُمْ اسْتِبْدَالَ زَوْجٍ مَكَانَ زَوْجٍ وَآتَيْتُمْ إِهْدَاهُنَّ قِيمْ طَارًا فَلَا تَأْخُذُوا مِنْهُ شَيْئًا أَتَأْخُذُونَهُ بُهْتَانًا وَإِسْمًا مُبِينًا But if you want to replace one wife with another and you have given one of them a great amount in gifts, do not take back from it anything. Would you take it in injustice and manifest sin? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically talks about a person who uh, divorces his wife and wants to take another wife and uh, he 
had given his divorced wife a huge sum of money, suppose, and he wants to take it back now. But he cannot do it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid that. And dowry is the right of women. So whether it's actually like a huge sum of money or a small amount of money, you cannot take it back. So you cannot beg for it, you cannot take it by force. And oppression is actually one of the major sins in Islam. If you take it by force, that, that will be counted as an oppression. But whether it's actually a billion dollar or a million dollar, you cannot take dowry back from women. You cannot beg for it. And you cannot take take it by force, as I said, as I mentioned before. The only way that you can spend from the money of the dowry is that your wife gives you the permission to spend from that. Apart from that, you cannot use that money. There's only one exception that a man can take dowry back, and we will look into that exception in the, in the next verse. Let's take a look into another verse. In this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions, "Audhu billahi min al-shaytan rajim يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَهِلُّ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَرِسُ النِّسَاءَ كَرْهَا أَنْ تَرِسُ النِّسَاءَ كَرْهَا وَلَا تَعْدُلُوهُنَّ لِتَزْهَبُوا بِبَعْدِ مَا آتَيْتُمُوهُنَّ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِينَ بِفَاهِشَةٍ مُبَيِّنَةٍ وَآشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَى أَنْ تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And in translation of the verse, it says, O you who believe, you are forbidden to inherit women against their will, and you should not treat them with harshness, that you may take away a part of the mahr you have given them, unless they commit open illegal sexual intercourse and live with them honorably. If you dislike them, it may be that you dislike a thing and Allah brings to it a great deal of good. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically mentions that you cannot inherit women and also the other thing was we were talking about the exception of dowry and here's the exception of it the exception is that if uh, she cheats on you for example your wife cheats on you and that's the moment that you can take your dowry back a few points to mention in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids the inheritance of women it was a uh, practice before Islam and we will see it in the Bible as well that if a family member died the rest of the family would inherit uh, that particular you know, woman. So the other thing is that the exception of the dowry. So how can a man, you know, there's exception that a man can take dowry. Well, what's that exception? The exception is when a woman cheats on her, her husband and the husband can divorce her and take the dowry back. That's the only moment. That's the only, you know, uh, situation. The other thing in this verse was that apart from that, you should treat and live with your wives honorably. And even if you dislike them, you know, don't uh, be patient because Allah will, you know, you don't know things. And uh, maybe from the things that you don't like, may, uh, will Allah bring good things that you might not know because you're the servant and he is the creator. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, it is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, verse 231 <laughs> And when you divorce women and they have nearly fulfilled their term, either retain them according to acceptable terms or release them according to acceptable terms, and do not keep them intending harm to transgress against them. And whoever does that has certainly wronged himself. And do not take the verses of Allah in chest and remember the favor of Allah upon you and what has been revealed to you of, of the book and wisdom by which he instructs you and fear Allah and know that Allah is knowing of all things. So what's the fulfilling fulfilled their term means? You know, the fulfilling of the term is actually like when you, for example, divorce your wife and uh, the term is that, uh, she, that three months. 
So whether in the three months you will keep her in the house, right, in your house, you will shelter her, you will clothe her, you will support her financially. And if you want to remarry her, so you have to do it in acceptable terms. And if you want to, you know, let her go, do it in acceptable terms. You know, do not actually like transgress against them, do not harm them. And if you do that, you surely you will commit sin. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here saying. Look at the translation of the verse. It says, Allah them in a section of where you dwell out of your means and do not harm them in order to oppress them. And if they should be pregnant, then spend on them until they give birth. And if they breastfeed for you, then give them their payment and confirm among yourselves in the acceptable way. But if you are in discord, then there may be there may breastfeed for the father another woman. Few things to look at this verse. Uh, the first thing is that it says that do not harm them and do not uh, and in order to oppress them. So you, the man cannot oppress and harm woman. First thing. The other thing is that if they are pregnant. Until they spent on, uh, sorry, then spent on them until they give birth. It means that you should support them financially until they give birth. And if they are actually like even breastfeeding after the birth, also you should, uh, you know, spend on them financially and support them financially. And the other thing is that if you're in discord, it means that you have a dispute on, on the issue that who should breastfeed the child. Then if the father can select another woman to breastfeed the child. So they, these are the things that they mentioned here. And it's also about the divorce. It doesn't talk about, you know, when they're living together. It's about the divorce. That After you divorce the woman, what sh how should you behave towards the woman? So in summary, there are a few points that we should mention. Point number one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man and woman for each other's tranquility. He placed affection and mercy between them. In the sight of Allah, it doesn't matter if you are a male or female, every single deed of them will be counted. So the believing man and woman are friends and helpers of each other. They assume authority over each other. Dowry is the right of women and men cannot spend from it without the permission of their wives. So it doesn't matter if the dowry is a huge or a small sum. A man cannot take it back. Another point, a man cannot inherit a woman. A man cannot oppress women. After the divorce, a man cannot force his wife out of the house. Rather, he has to shelter her and financially support her until the completion of the term, which is three months. And if, in the other point is, in the case of pregnancy, even after the divorce, the man should shelter and support his wife financially until the birth, as, as we discussed before in the verses. Point Number 11 is that if the woman breastfeed for the husband, the husband should support her financially again. So there are a few points. The last points that, that I mentioned are about the divorce, right? So these are the rights that God gave the woman. So the Islamophobes and the polemics and some of the murtads or the apostates will not show, show you these verses. They will hide it and they will actually bring some verses that the man is able to or it, or it has the right to beat his wife and stuff like that we will talk about that later and we will mention that as well that if it's true or not we will discuss them and I will show you to you, show it to you 100% that they are lying and they are liars so now let's go to the uh, points about the Bible and we will look into the verses of the Bible and see what kind of rights does the Bible give to the woman last point to mention is that Islam is the only religion that gives the woman the right to inheritance, the right to, uh, to own land and the right to own property and all these things. So a Christian might argue that you know a woman gets half of the share of a man you know gets in the inheritance. Well the answer to that is really easy. Just tell them that your religion doesn't give the woman the right to inheritance even. So why do you argue that they are giving, you know, the Islam gives the woman the half of the share of what, uh, half of what a man earns. So, and we will discuss that as well. Right, we will talk about the inheritance. There was an article in, about this in Yaqeen. So we will see that. Is it all the time that men gets you know, more inheritance than women? Or there are also cases that women gets more uh, share inheritance than the men. So we will discuss them as well.